Hey everybody, welcome back to Champion Sons and our NHL expansion series here with the Houston Arrows. But today we are focusing on our AHL team, the Austin Ice Bats. And to get this one started off, we are going up against basically cross city rival Texas Stars. Now they actually play in Cedar Park. We're here at the Moody Center in downtown Austin. So it is a little different, but it's close enough that we are cross city. Now our team has been struggling a little bit, so we are going to take a look at who we who we do have and uh, really where can we see some improvement? Do we have guys that we can call up? Um, I know it's real early in the season, but you want to try to see that potential already. And I can tell you, looking at one guy right now, Bouchard on the defensive end, he's you know just seeing him right now, he started out pretty good. Um, he's got pretty good stick control. And the Sarge Jarvi or whatever his name was, he he did pretty good for us. Um, he did get sent down, however, you know after the preseason. But he did pretty good during some of those preseason games. So we, we'll definitely want to keep our eye on him and see how he's shaping out. Now we're doing a pretty good job with our overall puck control, but we take a big shot there, and Bouchard delivers it right back to him in the neutral zone to get us the puck back over to Dawes. As he's putting the pressure on. Nice little spin move. He's got some offensive capability. Now, McLeod, we just brought over on a trade. Um, and, and that was one of the things that we were needing with our Houston uh, our NHL team is to get a trade in. McLeod is actually about an 82 overall. I, I really wanted him just to come down here to uh, Austin instead of go straight to Houston. Just to kind of get get his get his skates back under him after trade. Sometimes that can be kind of shocking to guys. Um, so we'll have we'll probably be getting him called up at some point soon. It's just really I just need him to get used to our organization as a whole. Now we're doing a pretty good job keeping the pressure on here in the stars uh, zone. McLeod right there poking that away from him. You can see he's the stick control he's got as he kicks that one out and then races for it and continues fighting along the board. He's definitely going to have to get called up here pretty dang quick. I'll be surprised if he's not up in the NHL by our next episode. And so here we come back after taking possession of the puck. Calico has it on the left side. He gets hit and loses it. Schlaffer picks it up. And now it's a scrum for it on the boards, and the Stars come away with it as they come right back at us here into the neutral zone. Over to Damiani. Giorgio. Giorgio. I'm not sure how they pronounce it. Been to a few Stars games. Still don't know how they pronounce it. But either way, so they do shoot. It is going to be stopped. Um, and so right now we do go advance a little head into the first period here. Just two minutes remaining. The score is still 0-0. Zero zero. Both teams putting up a fairly decent amount of pressure. Um, putting up some good shots. But I do think our team is definitely playing a little bit way better. Forcing the puck in their side of the zone a lot more. Now Giorgio, or Georgie, I'm just going to call him Georgie, comes out. Brings it into our zone as he tries to do a little fancy stick work with it. Gets too fancy and actually loses it over as we come right back with it into the star zone. Send it behind their net. Calico goes around and snags, picks it up. Over back to Quas. Sends it over to for a one-timer. That's going to be stopped by Anderson. Pretty easy stop for him. Under one minute to go. Anderson glove saves that one. And that's going to uh, go ahead and get it. Uh, take it to a face-off. Now, there's one other, Yam what's his name, Yamamoto, I think. Yeah, it was Yamamoto, but McLeod in the meantime scores on that one off the rebound. Wow, Ryan McLeod puts that goal in right there. McLeod's pretty good. Kyler Yamamoto is another player we picked up off a of trade who's got a lot of talent and ability. I want to say his ratings are probably in the low 80s as well. We're, we definitely got guys we're going to get called up, uh, but I think need some just refinishing and get used, like I said, before, get used to our organization. Now that would give us a one nothing lead there in the first period, and so we're actually going to advance up now into the second period here, still leading one to nothing with about five and a half minutes remaining. As we get that puck over to McLeod to take down into the zone, he sends it over to Blunden. He sends it back to Serge Harvey. Fires in a good shot, rebound, blocker save, or defender blocked. And then that Stars come back into the neutral zone. And that's where we are winning a lot of the these matchups and a lot of the, the puck capability. We're winning it from the neutral zone. 
as Serge Harvey fires that wrister in, but good stop by Anderson. You gotta give the guy credit for that one. But that's one thing I like seeing from these young guys. Most of the guys on our uh, Austin team are pretty dang young, so it's good to see them playing that fiercely in the neutral zone, not giving that up, trying to turn that into our zone, basically. Now here we come after the faceoff. We did win it and got the powerful shot off, and the puck's been kind of bouncing around in the star zone. We're not giving them a whole lot of space to make any movement as they finally get it back into the neutral zone, but once again, we take it right from them. Good job to see the stick work. We're not getting a whole lot of penalties. Big hit from behind as the puck is still free on the boards behind their goal, and Martin comes in and smacks them. Now Kist has it. And he turns that one over, but over, still pretty good job. Good stick work uh, by all of the guys on our team to get that uh, puck poked away. Tried to send a long pass, almost intercepted, but we recover that one as we come back into their zone. Drop it off and have a little bit of a line change going on. And Schlaffer misses the hit. Bouchard pokes it away from him. We gather it up along the boards. Now it's just a mad scramble. Celine tries to take it down, unable to get it. He puts a big hit on him, and Sapatyuk takes that one. Schlaffer tries a backhander, but it gets stopped, and he gets hit, unable to do so. As we still battle in the neutral zone, Celine has it down the right side, tries to send the pass in across the middle, unable to do so. Stopped by the Stars. Now Markinson's got a runaway, poked away from him at the last second, and the Stars gathered up behind their net. Big time hit over there, and that's probably going to result in a penalty. Or is that going to be the end of the period? I think that was the end of the period right there. Great job by this team to poke that one away from them at the last second to prevent the one-on-one. -on -one. Now we are going to advance once again up here into the third period. This time the Stars are on a power play. Six minutes remaining in this game. We still lead one to nothing. This is going to be a mad scramble to the very end. Stars are going to be able to put on a lot of pressure here. We may have to try to counter them. Once again, whenever we drafted, we went for guys that had a lot of speed. Um, that was one of the biggest things. And here on these shorthanded times, uh, that gives us, I, I don't want to say an advantage because you're never at an advantage when you're a man down, but it allows us to do a little bit more, getting the puck out at least into the neutral zone, getting it around and maneuvering. But the Stars taking full advantage here. Fire that shot off. It's going to be blocked by the defender. They are now, we're now at full power, five on five. They still have it. Luis sends it across, unable to get control of the puck. And we regain control and take it right back into the neutral zone. And here we come with it. Quas with the puck, sends it over to Celine. Takes it down the right side. Sends the puck down behind. Calico goes and gets it. He has it, sends it, almost tries to send it back across to Celine, but not the greatest pass. Schlaffer picks it up in the neutral zone either way and sends it, drops it back down in. Gets some fresh legs on the ice for the defense. Now, Tchikik, Tchisik, <laughs> takes it, delivers a big hit. Celine is still on the ice force, and he finally comes off there. Bouchard is on for the defense. Um, Calico's out there. We're all kind of sitting here defending in this last minute and a half, wondering when this, they are going to go six, and they're going to pull their goalie, but obviously not now that we got possession of the puck. One minute remaining in this game as we send the puck down. Yamamoto has it, tries to bring it up. Backhander! Great stop by Anderson, but a good job on the backhander by Kyler Yamamoto, one of the other new guys we picked up off the trade. And here come the Stars with it as we gather it right back in. 40 seconds. They're still not able to bring on their, uh, pull their goalie out. Bouchard has it. Looking for somewhere to go with it. To Sorella. Back across the middle, intercepted by the Stars, and here they come. Martin hands it over to Damiani, who ends up getting it poked away at the last second. They do pull their goalie. They pulled Anderson. It's a six on five right now. They're battling for it on the boards. Bouchard not giving anything up. Get the pass away and the shot off. Great stop by ours. Here we come. Yamamoto's got that one gathered in. He's coming down the right side. Sends it over to Sorella. All he needs, he shoots it and it gets stick stayed by Solon. Oh, we gather it back in and now they're going to give us an offside with four seconds remaining. Trying to put it away with the empty net shot. Great block there. <laughs> the Stars defender. Yeah, we almost had that one in. Four seconds remaining. This one is pretty much locked up and ours. Great job to beat our rival at home. And that's what we really needed. We have been kind of struggling. So good to see us producing right there. One-nothing victory. I would definitely like to get more goals on the board. Uh, but 
Reha, good job in, in net, um, stopping all their shots. Overall, great job for the team performance. And this kind of victory is going to set us up for, you know, some momentum going forward overall. I think defensively it sets us up really well. We did a great job in the neutral zone, keeping the puck out of ours um, and taking it away from them. Taking advantage of the one rebound, McLeod did a fantastic job pulling that one down. Okay. And that is going to set us up here for our next game, which is going to be on the road facing off against the Chicago Wolves. This should be a really nice matchup. Uh, both teams fairly well talented. Uh, we still have Yamamoto and McLeod here with the Austin team. Like I said, I'm giving them some time. It's only been a couple days uh, after that last game so we can get them acclimated. And big time hit by Sorella, smacking him to the eye. Almost a penalty as we fire that one in from the back. Dawes now fighting for it on the board, sending it back to Sarjarvi. Over to Bouchard. Bouchard down and around. Picked up by Sorella. Goes around and tries to sing that one in, unable to do so. Yamamoto scooped it up. Have in the middle, Sorella fires a wrister in, and that's going to be stopped by their goalie. A lot of quick pressure on, and that's one of the biggest things. We have the speed. Like I said, we drafted for speed. That's one thing we definitely did do. So we draft, We have speed to get back with our defenders, but the good thing about that is it allows us to keep a lot of pressure forward. The Sajarvi takes it after the winning the faceoff. Bouchard has it, gets it over to McLeod, unable to do anything with it as it's poked away from him. But they're going to call, what is that, going to be an interference call? So that's going to put us on a power play. Daniel Brickley getting the interference call because he's a bum. Is going to put him in the box for two minutes and give us a power play. Now, when I say two minutes, a lot of times some of the settings is you have like an actual like human two minutes. These two minutes are timed out to the period which I'm playing a 20 minute period in six minutes. So you really think about how quickly this power play goes. We're gonna have to get used to that and try to figure out something about uh, being more advantageous with it. As we are mad scrambling for the puck right now. So Jarvie has it over to Calico, tries to send that one in blocked by the defender. And here they come right back with it. Bring it into the neutral zone and flip that one in. Blunden chases it down behind our net. 30 seconds remaining on our power play. He's coming right back with it. Still fighting for it along the boards on the left side. Coming across. Wister, and that's going to be stopped by Perrick. Perrick scooped that one up with his glove. Great job, though. That was a good little move coming down. No need to try to hit the pass if you don't have it. And he had a path to in front of the goal, so he took it. Now, there's still eight seconds left, but they win that faceoff, and they just sling it down the ice, and it's going to be evened up. Uh, five on five hockey once again here in the first period. We take that one, get it to Sorella down the left side. A good little pass. Sorella has it. Sends it over to McLeod. He shoots and scores. McLeod with another one. A quick wrister. Oh, my goodness. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. That's going to give us a 1-0 lead here on the road in the first period. Great pass. And then a beautiful finish there by McLeod. I mean, none of that was going to be possible without that perfect pass through. Great. These guys are really starting to come together. And you see whenever you have this extra talent out there um, in Yamamoto, in McLeod, what you can actually do as a team. It'll be exciting to see what they do once we get them up into Houston. Now Sorella with the puck after winning the faceoff. We have it in the, their zone. Fires that one in. He gets hit as he shoots, and so it gets knocked away, and here comes Chicago. Mateos has it in the neutral zone. The Wolves trying to get something going, unable to get really much of an offensive formation happening, so they send it down in. Big time hit as we get crushed along the boards, but it's gathered back in by Yamamoto over to Frolin, and he's going to send that one down for an icing call like a fool. And so one nothing is where we stand right now. Now here we are a little bit later in this one in the first period, just under two minutes to go. As we are here on a faceoff, McLeod doesn't win that one. The Wolves do. Calico tries to chase him down, but Matheos has it and comes right back down the ice with it. Valentinko scoops that one up, trying to keep possession of it. Good job by both guys. And we turn it over right in front of our goalie. Patula has it and sends it back around to Blunden. He tries to get it over to McLeod as we finally have it in the neutral zone. McLeod sends that one down. Under one minute remaining here in the first period. Celine chases him, unable to get him. 
Coming back across. They're putting pressure on. Backo has it. It's poked away from him at the last second, but scooped up. And uh, we fall on top of it and send it out. Six seconds remaining. A quick turnover, though. Four seconds. Got to be tough on this one. One second left. They fire the wrister in, but we stop it. Whew, that was a stressful, stressful final two minutes. I don't think it needed to be like that. Now, that's the end of the first period. We do still lead one to nothing, thankfully, after some of those foolish mistakes we were making there at the end of the second, or in the end of the first. Now, here we go into the second period, still leading one nothing about halfway through, 10 minutes remaining. Backo scoops that one up and fires that one in as we get a perfect stop on it. Our defense trying to gather that puck and finally do, fighting for it along the boards. Send it out into Celine in the neutral zone. That's going to go all the way down, but it does get touched, so no icing call. Celine battling for it behind the net, unable to keep control of it. Here come the Wolves right back into the neutral zone. Murray drops it off. It was picked up by Harper and back over to Backo. Fires that one in and bounced off the blocker save. And now it looks like a penalty. And this time Chicago is going to have the power play. Tobias Eder. 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 Tobias. We're just going to call him Toby. Toby gets into the penalty with an interference call on that one. Not sure really where that interference happened. It looked like just a hit, but hey. Here we go. Here we are on our penalty kill. Quas has it, sends it over to Sorella into the neutral zone. And it's going to be a battle for us trying to get this, keep this puck out. They've been putting a lot of pressure on here since the end of that first period. And here they come with it. Rister in, and they get the power play goal. Oh, goose. Gust puts that one in off the rebound. I mean, you can't say. But a good save on the first one. I just didn't have a defender there to knock it out of there after the rebound, and they scoop it up and uh, score that one. So the game is tied 1-1 one to one now here in the second, but we're going to try to change that over. Dawes intercepts the pass, takes it down the left side, hit big time on the boards, and loses control of the puck, but he sticks with him. Trying to chase him down. Sorella pokes it away. Wrist that one in. And we're just like that. We're back in the lead. Oh, my goodness. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Alexi Sorella with the steal and the wrister cutting across the goalie's face. Beautiful job keeping the pressure on him. And then just firing that one in. Perrick had no way to stop it. And that's going to give us the lead here once again in the second. Now the faceoff. Is going to happen. The Wolves will win that one. Fitzgerald has it. We're putting immediate pressure. Sorella has it once again. And he gets knocked behind him. Oh, my goodness. He gathers the puck up. Risks that one over. Unable to get that goal as a parent does glove save that one. And now it's starting to get a little chippy down there. The guys are starting to push on each other a little bit as we come to this faceoff. And here we are still six and a half minutes remaining in this period. As the faceoff is on the Wolves' side of the ice. Brickley gets control of it and sends it over to Gundler. Gundler in the neutral zone is hit and loses control of it. And it bounces off the goalie, but that's going to be offsides. Ooh, okay. I thought ooh, that was a risky one. That was I thought we had a good run there, uh, but apparently not. So after the offsides, we're at a faceoff once again where Chicago wins that one. Fitzgerald takes it over, but we are going to keep the pressure on him. Sorella has a big hit along the backboard. Another one! Sorella's playing like a madman. As we got a final big hit over there on the Wolves players. Starting to get a lot more physical with it. Show them we're not afraid of them. We got a lot of young kids, but we are young and dumb. And we're not afraid as we get the pass up to Eater. All by himself tries to come across and it's poked away. Great job by our offense to keep the pressure on. Celine trying to force it, force a turnover. Does snags it up. Sends it back over to Eater. Right in front of the net. Loses control of the puck first. It's poked away. Ilest, Ilstead goes after him. Now Bouchard hits Reese right in the neutral zone. A big hit as they lose the puck once again. Here we have the puck over to Blunden. Looking for a place to go with it. Sends the pass back to Bouchard off the wall. Gathered in down behind the net now. A caveat of uh, ice bats down there. I don't even know a caveat. A, a gaggle, a flock of ice bats. I, mean, I don't know what a bunch of ice, what a bunch of bats are called. Uh, but... A flock of them down there, and we end up losing possession. That was not the greatest uh, offensive possession in Arizona. Now, we do gather it back up. Two minutes remaining here in the second period. Bouchard gets it over to Blunden, who takes it down the left side of the ice, looking for somewhere to go. Stops, comes right back at it. Sends it to Hatula, who 
tries to wrist that one in, but it's blocked by the defender. And now here comes Chicago. As we get it, let's take it right back from him in the neutral zone. McLeod has it now down the left side. One minute remaining in the second. Sends it over to Blunden. One timer stopped by the defender. And now here they come with it. Big time hit. It's taken over by McLeod. What can he do with it? Has it in their zone. Comes right across. Wrists that one in and Parrott gets the stop. 15 seconds remaining. It's getting chippy now. Some guys are starting to poke at each other. And it's happening. It's happening. Hatula versus Harper. They're dropping the gloves. They're squaring off. We got fisticuffs flying in Chicago today. Hatula lands the first punch. And the second. And the third uppercut. Oh, he takes a good shot. Now they start grappling around on the ice. They both got a hold of each other and they're swinging. Harper starting to land some good shots, but Hatula, not phase, has one more, two more to go. And he blasts him with that right hander. That's straight and that's going to put Harper on his back. Good fight there by Hatula. Way to, way to stand him up. Deliver the opening three blows in that, in that little glove drop session. Three blows landed, but Harper stood tall. Give the kid credit. Good job both by both guys. Juna Hutula. Juna Hutula. That's it. Man, I wish I didn't know his first name. Juna Hutula. Um, no, just Hutula stood up. Got the respect needed. You don't pick on him like that. You don't put your glove in his face unless you're ready to drop the glove. You know what I mean? And Harper was and Harper lost. That's the way it goes. All right? So you win some and you lose some. So still here in the second period with another face-off. 7.6 seconds remaining as we will... Kind of poked that one away, recovered by Chicago. They're coming down three seconds. It's intercepted by Bouchard, doing what he normally does. As the second period will come to an end, we lead two to one uh, on the scoreboard, one to nothing on the fight sheet. Basically leading all around here in this game. And so that's going to cut us over here into the third period now. Third and final period, 2-1 lead. This is an opportunity I think we can come out early and get uh, extend our lead on, which will help us, you know, be a little bit more confident, but also kind of seal it, possibly even look to seal it up. Our defense is playing great. Just because we have a lead, I don't want to change up how we're playing defense and putting the pressure on it. You know what I mean? But I think it, it can give us an opportunity. However, Chicago's the one putting the pressure on as they get the shot off and then it does bounce away. Now that we have it coming down the ice on the left side. Send it a rack around to Dawes. Scoops it up. Wrists that one in and breaks his stick as he does. Oh, man, that was a powerful shot. They try to hand Dawes another one. As we still fight for it alongside the boards. We have it from him. Sends the pass over to Yamamoto, and it's going to be his goal. Oh, my goodness. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Kyler Yamamoto with the one-timer. A great pass over to him, but a beautiful finish. As he just scooped that one up and sent it right behind Parrott. And basically off that far side post into the net. Beautiful goal right there to give us a 3-1 lead here early in the third period. And on that note, we're going to advance up a little bit further into the third period. Just under seven minutes remaining. We still have a 3-1 lead and we're still putting the pressure on them. All right, never take your foot off the gas. If you do, you're going to come back and lose. And we've had that happen to us already in this series so far in the NHL. So here we go, 3-1, another faceoff. McLeod taking it, he, he loses that one. He doesn't lose a whole lot of them, but he takes his revenge and puts the guy on his back. Blunden scoops up the puck and sends it back over to Dawes. And uh-oh, they take it. Drury comes down with it for Chicago, one-on-one. -on -one. He loses control at the last second. Hatula poked it away from him and he was unable to get that one and now here they still keep him pressure on. Gust has it. He scored the goal earlier in the game, but now it gets over to Calico. Back over to Blunden in the Chicago side. We come across, trying to send that one-timer in and a wrister. And I hate that. You mistime your one-time wrist shot, it becomes a, a slashing penalty. So now Calico is going to be in there. You may see the other guy in. There was another fight out on the ice. Um, that one was not as one-sided as before. We did win, but just not as one-sided. So, it wasn't important to the game. You know what I mean? And so now here we are after the face-off, after that penalty. They are on the power play. We are going to have to keep pressure on in the neutral zone. That's where I think we can do our best. Now we have it for him and almost got a short-handed goal. 
put the attack on. That's what speed allows. And look, Bouchard's already able to get back for us. And now they take it from us in our zone. Still working the puck around. They send one time over. Great stop by our goalie. What a great stop right there. As we have it back over to Celine, over to Schlaffer, who's going to miss the one time. Putting pressure on, but now we're back at even numbers. Five on five. Still leading three to one here in the third. Two and a half minutes remaining. Chicago has it in the neutral zone and sends it over to our area. And they get caught off sides on that one. So two minutes and six seconds remaining in this game. We still lead three to one. Chicago's still trying to put the pressure on us, though. And at some point, they're probably going to go empty net, which is where we need to take advantage. McLeod on the faceoff loses that one again. Damn it. Frolin now trying to poke that one away and gets it into Tishasek. Tishasek. God, I got to work on these names. Who takes it into the Chicago zone but loses, promptly sends a bad pass back and loses it. Frolin chasing himself away as Chicago has it in our no zone and they do pull their goalie. Rister one timer and it gets away from them. We take it down the right side, send it over. As we continue to push, and that's going to be offsides. 53 seconds remaining. I'll tag an offside. That's going to force their goalie back in. So it was six on five until then. Now we got to win the faceoff. 53 seconds remaining in a 3-1 game. As we do win the faceoff, Dawes takes it down into their zone. Has the puck. Sends it over to Cirillo. Risk that one in. And it's going to be blocked. Now here comes Chicago. Waiting for them to pull their goalie. And they finally do. They send the sixth man on the ice. Mateos has it. Fires that shot in off our glove save. Not able to hold on to it though. And here we come right back with it. Yamamoto over to Dawes. Dawes has it. Risk that one in. Empty net. That's going to seal the deal. Dawes with the goal. That's going to make it 4-1 to one here in Chicago. Big time goal by Nigel Dawes. His second of the season. 4-1 victory here for the Ice Bats. And we have a pretty good young team start now. I will say, pretty good young team uh, going here. It's good to see these guys starting to play so well uh, with each other. So a 4-1 victory, great job by our goalie. You know, allowing only the one goal in off the uh, rebound. Not that they didn't have other opportunities, but he just made the stops. And for our guys, putting the final shots and the closing touches um, on this goal to make it first the three to one uh, score from Calico and then the uh, four to one empty netter by Dawes. Again, can't say enough about these kids and their performance. So let's take a look at some of these players that we have. Sorella, you know, he's our leading uh, point getter. He's got 24 points on the season. McLeod just came over to us, like we said, in a trade. So he's young. He's 22. He's a pretty decent young kid, though. And I think, you know, he's got potential to get called up real quick. And I don't know if we should wait till an injury, just give him a little bit more time, or if we should go ahead and look to bring him up. I, I, I'm tempted to go ahead and bring him up. I really am. You know, Bouchard is another guy. He's... He's real young, Evan Bouchard. He's 22 years old. I I don't know if he's ready for the NHL, but he's definitely one of the best in the AHL right now, as far as defenders go. Now we come down the come down the lane. Dawes got his second goal in that game, but he does have eight assists. He's not. He's definitely not ready yet. Um, so take that for what it is. Now, as we, sorry, Jarvi, he's a guy we sent down from our Houston team. Uh, you know, he's done all right. He, he, he's done okay for himself, I'll say. Eight points, two goals, six assists. Um, from where he is and the kind of defender he is, I don't expect all that much more from him. I think he's right on line with where we expect his development to be. Hatula, I do think, has more potential than what he's producing. We're going to have to watch that. He's 24 years old. He's definitely got a lot more potential than that. Then Yamamoto, we just brought him in. He's only been playing with us for five games. And in those five games, he's already got six points. So we'll have to keep that in mind, right? He is an 82 overall forward. So he's definitely looking to be called up. I just want him to get a little bit more acclimated to, um, to our team and to our uh, franchise overall, our, affiliate, our AHL affiliate. And that will help him get kind of – um, comfortable with the franchise so when we do call him up it'll be a pretty smooth transition on that note 
All right, now while we finish taking a look at this, I do want to uh, thank y'all for joining us in this episode and remind you to hit the subscribe button if you have not hit it already. And if you did like today's video, give us a thumbs up as it does really help us out here at Champ and Sons uh, Gaming. It helps out the channel. And I do want to thank y'all for all the support y'all have shown the series and the channel over the last few months. We're over 310 subscribers and... Like I said, from where we were a year ago, didn't think that would be possible totally. So thank y'all so much for that and all the support y'all have shown. Now we will be back in the NHL for the next episode, and I will see y'all then, everybody. So as always, stay safe, and well, y'all know how it goes by now, right? Later, y'all.